what ethics. So what are the ethical considerations that creators and the entertainment industry must address as we move forward on these audience-centric immersive experiences? Ethics in the entertainment industry. Do you need to go and lie down? Jesus. Um, I always tell people, the uh, if you want to know what the movie business is all about, watch Tropic Thunder and watch the one scene where Tom Cruise's character, Les Grossman, where Les Grossman uh, tries to convince Matthew McConaughey to let his client die in the jungle so that they can file an insurance claim because it'll make more money than the movie they're making. Um, and that's the movie industry right now. <laughs> but um, ultimately, you know, when you talk about ethics and immersive experiences and things like that, we have to be, uh, you know, the things that really bother me are like, um, you know, with Facebook and Instagram and, and TikTok to a certain extent, is all the sort of body dysmorphia issues and all of the these kinds of things that are, you know, driving teenagers, you know, to uh, really profound mental health problems. And um, then there's all the kind of subgroups like, you know, the rise of sort of like um, the incels and things like that. And we have to be really careful about that. But then as a public policy thing, did you guys watch the TikTok? Um, the, like, was it the congressional TikTok uh, thing where you have the, the senators or whatever going like, hey, is TikTok evil? And you're like, <laughs> what is going on? These are not the right people to be, you know, policing. So ultimately, it's a really, it's a big issue and sort of bigger, I think, than we have been with to discuss here. But um, those ethical concerns, especially as we get into things like the metaverse, have to be really, really well thought out. And uh, believe me, the big companies are not going to police themselves. Yeah, I want to open it up to the panel. This is an important topic. I mean, Web3 is an interesting subject, right? So Jess and I were talking about this in the, in the little speaky line before Kim. Entered our workflows like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Um, coming through the door with an axe. Um, so ultimately, like, I just got off of uh, about a two year gig with uh, Amazon Web Services and their media and entertainment group. And ultimately, we are, you know, the idea is that the big studios right now want to increase efficiencies using the cloud as the basis. So one of the big ones is the cloud. cloud. Yeah. Exactly. And so the idea is that our big customers want to do things like, um, we call it OCM to cloud, original camera negative to cloud, to differentiate ourselves from Adobe's camera to cloud product. Um, but it's all the, relatively the same thing. And the idea is basically that you're shooting uh, high resolution raw data on set and you need to get it up to the cloud and then disseminate it to all of the departments like visual effects and essentially uh, you know editorial and sound as quickly as you possibly can but the when, the reason i say that it comes in like jack Nicholson with an axe is because you've got to remember that we have to deal with the iotnc we've got to deal with the producers guild right there you know they've already they've just stabilized what a digital imaging technician is right in terms of the contract and now we're saying, well, yeah, they're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> they're going to do be, something else. Got to be TPN certified. Yeah, well, it's it's a it's a big deal, right? So ultimately, you know, and then we're um, using the cloud also for virtual production for essentially bad workflows, so that we can distribute these you know Unreal Engine assets across multiple locations and have people looking at stuff in you know. Some people looking Web 3D, some people looking on, you know, goggles, but, you know, it's hard, right? I mean, you know, the thing is that ultimately the cinematographers, are, you know, they invented the word cantankerous for cinematographers, right? <laughs> oh, I need this for Get this away from me, right? You know, where's my scotch? Um, and so ultimately the, uh, um, you know, it's, it's a tough nut to crack, right? So, um, you know, that's why I say that. You're talking a lot about the studio model, but have these technologies become more accessible to creators on any level? Have, have yeah, I mean, indeed, if you look at something like, um, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not in any way throwing shade at Adobe's product. Um, their camera to crowd product, which they bought framework that they brought it block, stock, and barrel yeah, into we, we the Adobe Creative right. Cloud. And it's a great tool, but it's a prime example that illuminates what you're saying, which is that ultimately, you know, for the big, the Disney's and the Netflix's and the things like that, they want to have camera raw, um, you know, full bandwidth data going up to the cloud. And in order to do that, it's predicated upon you having an incredibly fat pipe, right? Which, as we know, is expensive, right? And so ultimately, 
these tools like um, Frame.io's Camera to Cloud allows, you know, you're obviously compressing it at your end and then sending it up, right? So ultimately, these things are, are flowing into um, low, you know, lower cost, lower budget productions, but, um, you know, there's still very much a kind of dichotomy. And the big, you know, one of the big differentiators here is, is pipe cost. Right? It's really expensive to get Totally, yeah. totally. At Metastasia was something that was a big challenge for us because as a small company, we were you know, locked into these spectrum contracts that would cost so much every month. So I don't, any innovation on that area, I would work on wholeheartedly. Absolutely. Your stuff, I yeah, AI TikTok, talk. AI yeah. talk is yeah. really good. Yeah, AI TikTok is really, really powerful. So. I have to say, I, uh, I'm a big fan one of the only things I use Facebook for, but I have, I monitor, or I should say I moderate a bunch of Facebook groups, and that's one of the great things about the internet is that, you know, we've got like, in my volumetric page, there's like people from Azerbaijan, you know, the people you never get to talk to, right? And that's actually really cool, the shared information from sort of groups doesn't have to be Facebook. <laughs> that's the only reason I have Facebook still, is because yeah, too. that's the only thing I do. Is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was really a big fan, and I've been playing video games and you know doing this kind of stuff for a long time. Second Life was actually pretty awesome, and um, Second Life actually had some really interesting. And it was great because it was truly horrifying, right? You could go on there, and they would let you do anything, right? And there was like a furry community, and you never read all these other weird things that were going on. And basically, that was what made it great. And I, I don't know that you could do that now the way community is very part of that. I'm sorry? The community is very important. You'll have to come online and find But uh, um, so the idea though that, like, I, I would love to see them, you know, look, I've been on the Facebook horizons beta since the beginning, and it often makes me want to take my own life. Um, but it's like, <laughs> um, I want to see a, a, a real, the real potential to me of the metaverse is like, um, we were talking earlier about Psyoc and the, the heritage preservation. I want to go visit the Mayan ruins. I want to go to the Roman Colosseum and see a fight at the Roman Colosseum. I want to go to Petra, right, and do all, and, and see that kind of stuff. I want to kind of, and I call it the Delos model. Delos being the people who made Westworld, right? I can go to, you know, Samurai world or Roman world, you know, and all that stuff. That's kind of what I'm really hoping that we can do. It's going to be really hard to do it without it immediately, like, you know, into the horrifying, you know, um, so, you know, because there, you know, you talk about moderation and, and all that kind of stuff, and then where does censorship start, right? No, you can't do that, right? So ultimately, it's a tough, not, not to crack, but I'm hoping that we can get it together and create sort of the Delos model. Anywhere in the world, to the top of the cutting and working on. 